Hello and welcome to AP Physics 2. My name is Mr. Dowd and I'll be your teacher for next year. And I'm so glad you're in this class for a couple of reasons. One, I like having students. Two, this is a class I wish more students got. In recent years, physics has been broken into smaller and smaller pieces. And what we call Physics A and AP Physics 1, they're focusing on a narrow and narrow set of topics. But there are so many cool things that used to be part of high school physics that you're the only students in the school that are going to get. So I'll show you some of those topics in a second, but I wanted to start with our Google Classroom. Um, this is where we're going to manage, obviously, all the work assigned and turning in and things like that. Um, so it's going to be an important part of our organization. But I have another website I've created that helps you find all the content I've put online. So if you go there, you'll see this website, which is pretty old school but that's all right. I use it kind of as a table of contents of everything we do. So here's where our stuff is going to go, but let's take a minute and look at last year's. So some of the stuff uh, you'll see up here, you'll see YouTube videos I've made. Um, and those I think are pretty effective for doing before class or if we have to do distance learning, um, kind of some of the direct instruction. Um, I also have taken tons and tons of pictures of my whiteboards, of chalkboards over the years, um, screenshots, pictures of worksheets, and all of that content I have on the photo sharing site Flickr. So really there's a way to get yourself back into the classroom when you're working at home and um, maybe you've forgotten what we've learned. Um, if you go online, you can see kind of pictures of, of similar things that we've done in the class and you can kind of get yourself back into class. So those two resources I hope are going to be really helpful for you. Let's take a look at last year's table of contents and now we can kind of see what the topics are. Fluids is an extension of the mechanics you learned last year um, to water and other liquids and other fluids, um, how they for have forces, how they um, move through systems, how their energy changes. Thermodynamics is a much more robust study of energy. Instead of just looking at work as a way of adding energy to a system, we also look at heat. We have then three units that really focus on charge. Electrostatics is how charges affect the spaces around them. Um, DC electric circuits is how we can use ideas of energy and conservation of charge to make charges move through a circuit and do what we want. And then magnetism is also related to charge, and we're going to see how magnetism and electricity are related, how we can have them work together to make things like generators and transformers and things like that work. Last year, the course truncated after that unit. Um, we had already actually done the entire next unit, um, and I'm glad we did because it is a cool unit. Uh, we look at um, waves and how waves travel, and in AP Physics 2, this is specifically supposed to be about light and how light uh, interacts with things like lenses, little films on puddles to make them pretty and rainbowy, um, slits, how light passes through small slits. And we basically build on uh, the waves you've learned in previous classes, sound waves and things like that. And I recognize for this year that you didn't get a full treatment of that, um, if any treatment, depending on what class you were in. So we'll talk a little bit about sound waves and things like that as well for this year. We finish the year on a smaller scale. We look at the atom and we look at how energy and uh, light and things like that interact with atoms. And it turns out that the structure of the atom really affects how energy can interact with an atom, how light can be given off an atom. So we look at the early studies of what different energies electrons can have. Um, and then we go into nuclear physics. We look at forces holding the nucleus together, how likely a nucleus is to decay and what happens when things decay. So there's a lot of topics here, but at the end of the day, the course is mostly based on stuff that you learned last year. And there's two big organizing principles from last year that we really don't want to lose sight of throughout our studies because they are the big ideas that hold physics together. Let's take a look at them. We're going to really build on the two major concepts of your first year physics class. We're going to see how forces add together. Newton's second law will be the major governing thing there. And in every unit, 
you'll see really exotic things that look really strange, but it'll still be uh, F net equals MA or sigma F equals MA. And all you gotta remember to do is just what you did before. You don't just consider whatever the exotic new thing we're studying is, you consider all the forces. The other thing we'll probably be doing is conservation of energy. So we'll look at all of the different potential energies that arise as you move through newer fields, not just the gravitational field now, but the electric field. So lots of things that will be new to us, but there also will be a lot of things that should be pretty familiar. So what the point of the summer assignment is going to be is to get us back in the mindset of thinking about the two really big ideas, conservation of energy and sigma F equals MA. And I'm going to throw in momentum as well because we'll look at that a little bit. And what we're going to have you do is try to figure out what different problems are when you're looking at them in a random order. I've just thrown a bunch of problems at you here and I've given you all the relevant equations that you might need to solve it. And I'd like you to start by just going through these problems and doing the best you can to solve them. Now I don't want there to be too much stress over these. Um, I am going to give you an answer key to them so you'll be able to, to kind of check and see what, what you know and what you need more work on. Um, but it's really just to get you used to the idea that you uh, pick different strategies for different problems, which I know you did in your first year course. So it's kind of getting us back there. The second part of the assignment is you're going to go through my answer key, um, which you can find at that link. And you're going to just kind of compare what you did to what I did. And you're going to be trying to ask yourself, how did I know this question was an, a momentum question? How did I know this question was a force question? And after you do that, I'm going to ask you to spend a little time thinking about how uh, the different types of, of concepts are related to each other. So in order to do that, we're going to make something called a concept map. And a concept map is basically kind of like a flow chart where you throw different ideas on paper and you try to figure out how they're linked. So this is how I kind of fleshed out how you would decide whether to do a sigma f equals ma problem or whether you do an energy problem or a momentum problem. This is another one I made for my students at the end of AP Physics 1 a few years ago. And it links the concepts together in kind of a different way. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at these two and think about what you did on the earlier part of the assignment and uh, try to come up with a concept map of your own. My hope is that by the end of your two years in physics that everything we've taught you, you haven't just learned concepts, but you've learned why you would use this tool in this uh, circumstance. That's what we're trying to get at. And this idea of sigma f equals ma and eo equals ef, they really are going to be the big ideas of this course too. They're just going to look different. So if we have a firm foundation in here, that'll definitely be worth our time. Um, one last thing, um, I'm kind of using the tradition that a lot of the science teachers of the school do of having summer work due in three discrete chunks. So this one is due July 24th, um, and then the next one will be due two weeks after that, and the last one will be due two weeks after that. Um, these are not going to be huge amounts, and this is negotiable. Like, if you got stuff going on, that's totally okay. But we try to break these into pieces in the science department just so you don't get one giant assignment that you try to do the night before and just kind of wreck your last little bit of summer. Um, so I promise this will be a reasonable amount of work, and I think it's going to have you feeling confident as we start the year. Um, one final thing. You know, this could be a strange year. We don't know exactly when we're going to be in school, when we're going to be out of school. That's okay. I want you to know you matter going to be here for you. We're going to find ways to interact individually and there's lots of laboratory things we can do at home. There's lots of lessons we can do at home. We're going to get you ready and get you where you need to be.